Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side kind of chat. So Tesla just uh, released or unveiled their first supercharger V3 and I have a lot of thoughts about it and they're not all positive actually. So just to give you sort of the breakdown They've added liquid cooled cables. It sounds like it's a one megawatt cabinet now. There's not going to be any power sharing between stalls, and it sounds like each stall will support up to at least 250. Uh, I think they were showing displaying 256 kilowatts of charging power. That's all good, but I have a few different issues with it. First, is it doesn't really resolve some of the major problems that I've already seen with the way Tesla electric vehicles travel. Essentially, you're priced into using the chargers the way they've set them up, and that's not a very liberating trip experience. And the problem with that is it's still not as fast as gasoline. So if you're fast enough now in your charging that people are, like I said, priced into compartmentalizing, essentially... Their, their stop is a dedicated refueling stop because it's not long enough to do the other things that you would want to do. Well, at that point, 15 minutes to 20 minutes is too long, as opposed to gasoline where five minutes, 10 minutes max, you're getting another three, four, five, sometimes 600 miles of range. Well, with the Tesla now, you're going to stop for 10 to 15 to 20 minutes but you're maybe only going to get 100 miles or 120 miles or maybe 140 miles of range. So if you're going to end up having to compartmentalize your charging, you'd like to be able to do more stuff while you're charging. And that's not something that you're really able to do. Another issue I have is it focuses so much on the peak charging rate. You know, everybody's clamoring now because it's a thousand mile an hour charging uh, at the peak rate or 256 kilowatts at the peak rate. But that already stops dropping off well before 20% battery. That means you have a very narrow window where you're actually seeing that faster charging rate. Now, sure, these weren't preconditioned batteries. And if they were, maybe you could hold that rate till you hit as much as 20%. But that's still only 10% of the battery that you're charging at that maximum 256 kilowatt rate. And then it starts dropping off dramatically at that point until you hit about 50 to 55% battery, at which point it basically matches the same speed that you'd be getting on a current supercharger. So you really are seeing a limited benefit in terms of sort of the average charging rate. I think the average charging rate is much more important. And while I do agree that you know, I prefer Tesla's model of miles per hour of charging, I disagree that we should be focusing on that peak, right? So while the Tesla Model 3 now on Supercharger V3 might peak at 1,000 miles per hour, you're only doing that for about five minutes, right? And then the average charge rate over the course of 45 minutes to an hour drops to maybe 300 miles per hour charge rate average, which when you look at it that way, it's actually not necessarily that impressive. And I would recommend that automakers maybe focus more on the Audi e-tron model than the what we're currently seeing right now with Tesla and their charging model. Because I personally, someone who's driven a lot of long trips in electric vehicles, my preference would be a vehicle that instead of doing what the Tesla Model 3 does, where it charges at 3.4, 3.5 C, uh, I would much rather see an EV that charges at a 2 C rate average from 0 to 85%, a consistently fast charging rate across the entire charging spectrum. I think that's good for EV owners. One of the main questions that we already have to answer to non-EV owners is, or new EV owners is, why is my charging so much different from session to session to session? 
well, there's a lot of technical reasons for it, a lot of things that go into it. No, I would much rather have a vehicle if I pull up at 60% battery charging at 150 to 200 kilowatts or 10% battery charging at 150 to 200 kilowatts than a vehicle that I have to essentially plan my trips around to end with a 5 to 10% charge so that I know that I'm getting my maximum charging rate for 5 to 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, that That isn't going to win over uh, a lot of non-EV owners, in my opinion. And I do think that the Audi model, how they're setting up their charging is much better. Like I said, I would much rather have an Audi e-tron charging at 155 kilowatts all the way up to 85% battery than a Tesla Model 3 charging at 256 kilowatts under 20% and then rapidly declining from that point on. One clear thing that I think is coming out of these uh, new Tesla Supercharger V3, I think this is essentially also Tesla's mega charger, right? If they're doing a one megawatt cabinet, my guess is they're going to start setting these sites up for their Tesla semis. And that I think is a really good thing. And I do think that the improved efficiency of the cabinets is going to uh, really help out. I think anything that will keep the efficiency high, lower cost, I think these are all good things. So really the V3 standard itself, I'm actually, I do like, I just don't like how it's being used in terms of the current vehicles and how they charge. One rumor that I've heard and I haven't really been able to substantiate is that Tesla is planning that all of these V3 sites are going to be powered by power packs and photovoltaic systems. I hope so. Uh, and then of course the other thing is that they're going to primarily focus on travel corridors. Again, I hope so. And then of course the final thing that actually really does upset me and I really wish Tesla could do something about their self-esteem issues. Uh, I, I feel like they're a little too image conscious and I'm really upset on behalf of the European Tesla Model 3 owners. They've received Model 3s that were limited from the factory and the only explanation for it is Tesla didn't want to be shown up by the CCS network in Europe because imagine you release a Tesla Model 3 in Europe and it's charging at 150 to 175 kilowatts on these CCS chargers in Europe that still aren't even maxed out on their power yet, you're gonna have a bunch of people in America saying, oh, well, why is the supercharger network not that good, right? So rather than just saying, hey, look, V3 is coming, you know, it's going to be set up for your vehicles, and provide a better charging experience, you just need to do that. You don't need to negatively affect your customers and owners in Europe. Right now, Bjorn Nealon was having a number of issues charging a Model 3 on the European CCS standards. And the only explanation is something that Tesla botched in the charging profile in order to limit it to that 125 kilowatts that we saw in the FastNed chargers was leading to other issues and poor user experience. And to me, when you put your image ahead of your customers, that says a lot about your company and it's not positive. Personally, I think that's a really upsetting thing that Tesla did and I wish they would just get over it. Honestly, I think that's the problem. And then of course, on the final note, one thing that I'm happiest about seeing with this uh, Tesla Supercharger V3 model in North America, I think it means that we're less likely now to see Tesla start leveraging or using the public charging net infrastructure because they're going to be responsible for their owners. And right now, the ratio of Tesla vehicles to supercharger heads is about 50 to 1, and it's increasing every day. If they were to suddenly unleash that on the public charging infrastructure without providing any sort of charging reciprocity, that would be a major problem. And it would go against everything that they claim that they stand for and they claim to be doing. So, you know, if they want to play in their own little walled garden, I'm actually happier for it. So Tesla can keep their network to themselves and all of the rest of us can use a public charging network that's growing at as fast, if not a faster rate than current electric vehicle adoption.
So I'd love to hear what you think. Do you have any more information about the Tesla Supercharger V3? Uh, have you had a chance to use it yet? Do you like how the thinner cords are working out? If you were there, were, you know, what were your experiences using it? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.